So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. So welcome back, everybody. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Today, we're going to be making a fiesta bowl. I've been wanting to make these kind of dishes. They're, they just have so many different flavors and so many wonderful ingredients. So stay with us. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take four ears of fresh corn that's been shucked. Of course, we all know that there's no fresh corn right now at this time. I bought this at the produce section at Walmart. <clears throat> it wasn't frozen. This is salted boiling water. Just make sure it's down in there. And what I'm going to do is let this come up to another boil. And uh, I'm just going to let it boil for about three minutes. And then I'm going to take it out and put it in some cold water to stop it cooking. So let's see what else is going in our Fiesta bowl. I've got about a half a cup of uh, chopped up purple onion. You can use a, a sweet Vidalia or whatever you've got. You can even use, go out to the garden, get you some shallots or green onions. I've got some cherry tomatoes. Got about a good tablespoon of cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, don't put it in there. Um, but you can put too much. Sometimes cilantro can be just a little bit overbearing. This is not real stout cilantro, though. I've done tasted of it, but it's just all up to you. And then I've got some black beans. This is black beans that I canned myself. So there could be probably a little bit more than 15 ounces in here. But you need about a 15-ounce can of black beans that's been drained and rinsed real good. And then, of course, our corn's over here. And this is going to be our sauce. I've got three tablespoons of melted butter. I've got two tablespoons of lime juice. This right here is taco seasoning. This is kind of like what you would use in your taco meat if you're using, if you're making tacos or something like that, like Taco Bell seasoning or something. If you make your own homemade, that's wonderful. I've got a recipe for it in one of my videos that I put down in the description box. We've got chili powder, cumin, salt, and roasted garlic powder. Okay, so we're going to start cutting the corn off the cob. After cooking it for three minutes and then putting it in cold water and stopping it from cooking, I'm just going to cut it off the cob now. And you can use... Um, Made it home. I see that. You're home just in time to help me cook supper. <laughs> I was hoping it would be ready. Well, it would have been, but I know. Had people stop by, so I see them people. Um But once I get this thrown together it won't take very long. You know, when it gets this time of year and the weather starts warming up. I like to have lighter suppers, and I don't like a lot of fried food. It just seems like it just kind of upsets my belly. So, but what I was saying is you can use some good uh, canned corn if you wanted to. If you, you know, they have the, the little niblets and they have uh, corn that's, you know, good crispy corn. You can use, uh, like I said, Fresh corn's the best, though, but this just come out of the, the produce section of Walmart. And I've got 
corn on the cob out there in the freezer from last year, but I was afraid that if I thawed it out, it would just the corn wouldn't be real crisp. It'd be, you know, kind of soggy after thawing out. So, so that's four ears that I've cut off the cob. I just talked to the one of our county road crews. Uh huh. You know that rain we got yesterday? He yeah. said north of here, north and west of us. He said he thought they probably got three or three and a half inches up in there. Well, I can tell. He said that they've been digging trees out from cross bridges and stuff today up in that country. Wow. Can you hand me um, one of them little spat the red one spatula looking thing? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our, our corn. We got our corn, and this is our black beans. And this is going to make more than enough for me, Mr. Brown. So we'll be able to eat it for our lunch tomorrow, which will be good. So we got our black beans and our corn. And we've got our tomatoes. And we got our onions. And I ain't got my little scraper over here. Um, our cilantro. And this is already looking good. Now I've got a couple of avocados. But I don't like putting my avocados in right away. That would be the last thing I put in there. And what I would probably do is once I serve this up, I'd just dice up a little bit of avocado and uh, put it with my fiesta. We're having a fiesta bowl. And it's going to have... Uh, I heard you talking about my weight. <laughs> For when? Eating light. Oh, eating light, yes. We need to eat a little bit lighter sometimes, and we do. We do quite a bit. Let's see, last night we had spaghetti, and we, we had a kale salad, which, a kale salad, you know, we all, I stress that we need to eat our greens, so, but it was just, all it was was kale from my garden, and uh, some cucumbers, walnuts. and walnuts, and some dried cranberries, and the, and the only thing I put on there was a little squeezed lemon juice and salt. And I just massaged it into that kale. And it was good. And it was good and it was healthy for us. So, okay. I'm going to go get a hen apple. Okay. So we got, ooh, my butter kind of. We got three tablespoons of melted butter, which is not melted very good right now. And we've got two tablespoons of lime juice. And then we've got, of course, our seasoning. We talked about that earlier. We got our taco seasoning, our chili seasoning, cumin, salt, and our garlic. Cumin, salt, and garlic. I'd say that again, make sure I said it right. And this is going to be our dressing for our bean salad here. So our fiesta bowl is going to consist of our fiesta chicken which we're fixing to, to season up, and it's just going to bake in the oven, and it's chicken breast. You can use uh, boneless, skinless uh, chicken thighs, uh, whatever you choose to use. I'm going to use breast tonight. And then I've got some rice that I had cooked a bunch up and put some in the freezer, so I've already got it cooked. All I have to do is season it up. And once I get all this together, We'll put our fiesta bowl together, and y'all going to see how wonderful it is, and uh, it's just going to be so good. Okay. We got our dressing together. So now we're going to put it on our corn salad here. Now, there's a lot of people that really love cilantro, and... Um, I like a little bit of it. I don't like a whole bunch. But it does give 
a salad like this, such a fresh flavor. So we're just going to stir this up good. Then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and let it sit in there. And my oven's telling me that it's warm. It's preheated. We're going to get our chicken together, get it in the oven. Now really and truly, this is going to come together pretty quick. You know, it takes more time just to get things cut up and ready than it does to actually cook it and get it served up. So there is our, our corn and black bean salad. We'll put it in the fridge. Then we're going to get our chicken out and get it going. Okay, for our chicken, I'm going to put about a half a cup of olive oil. You can use any kind of oil you want to. I, my choice is just olive oil. I'm going to have four chicken breasts. Then I'm going to go ahead and put in a good teaspoon of minced garlic. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of cumin. Now, if there's any of these seasonings that you just don't like, you don't have to put them in there. I'm going to put a teaspoon of chili powder, or I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of chili powder. And even though that I put minced garlic in there, I'm still going to put in some garlic powder. And this is roasted garlic powder. And I'm going to put a teaspoon. Dean, could you have that paprika? It's over there. I forgot to get it out. It's the red and that big tall. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt or half a teaspoon, whatever you want to put in there. About a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of, now this is a Spanish sweet paprika. That's what this is. And then I'm going to put about a teaspoon of oregano. And then I've got a tablespoon of lime juice. And I'm just going to mix that up. And now I'm going to go over and get my chicken breast. I've got my oven heating to 350. Okay, I got two of my chicken breasts here in the marinade. And I'm just gonna now if you can let this sit and marinate in the refrigerator for a while, that's even better. You could probably even do this first thing in the morning, go to work and come in and your chicken would be good marinated. And I've got my baking dish over here, and I've got it sprayed. So I'm going to put this chicken breast in here. And I've got two more chicken breasts. I'm going to try to get in here. And then we'll get them in the oven. I sprinkle just a little bit more paprika over the top and pour the rest of the marinade on there. Now I'm not going to cover it up or nothing. I'm just going to put it in the oven and probably about 30 minutes or so our chicken will be ready and we're going to start our rice. Okay well we got our chicken in the oven. My my corn, um, my bean salad, corn salad, whatever you want to call it, is in the refrigerator. So now all we got to do 
is get our rice going. And I can tell you, I'm just going to do this in the microwave. So it's going to come together pretty quick. I'm not going to have a bunch of pots and pans dirty on the stove. And uh, I'm just going to put a little seasoning in it. So it's going to be about that easy. I don't want my rice to be over seasoned because between the 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 bean salad and my chicken I want my rice just to be subtle so we're just going to put a little bit of seasoning in it and then I'm just going to cook it which my rice is already cooked but I'm just going to more or less just kind of warm it up in the microwave and get it ready so let's get the rice ready my rice has two tablespoons of olive oil a tablespoon of tomato paste, two tablespoons of lime juice, a half a teaspoon of cumin, a half a teaspoon of chili powder, and a whole teaspoon of garlic powder. And some salt. And some pepper. And I'm just going to give this a little bit of a stir. Then I'll put it in the microwave and let it cook just a little bit. Then I'll go in and stir it again to get that tomato paste stirred in good. Now you can put you some green chilies in here, some jalapenos. But like I said, I just want a kind of a subtle, subtle rice. Not too overbearing. So, I'm, since this isn't warm or it would blend together better, so what I'm going to do, since I'm going to be doing it in the microwave, I'm going to put some plastic wrap on it. Then I'm going to put it in the microwave. Put it on about three minutes and then I'm going to take it out and stir it and I'm going to taste it and uh, see where we're at. Have you ever cut a mango? Well, we're fixing to. Now there is a, a pit inside a mango that's right down the middle right there. I don't know if you can hear that. It's pretty long too. So you gotta just kind of go down the side of that. Some pits are bigger than others. You can see right there, there's the other side of it. See if I can get some of this. I can go off this side of this. You, know, you see, I cut into that pit, so I don't know. You can't get much off the side without getting into the pit, so we're going to let that be. But anyways, all you got to do now is just make cuts in it. Make it look like a tennis racket or something and then just turn it inside out just like that. Mango is a very good fruit to have with these kind of dishes. It just it just goes well with it. And if you're wanting to get a little healthier and a little bit of fruit in your diet, you know, at night with your supper, this is a good way to do it. I'm going to take a spoon and see if I can easily get that off there just like that. I don't want to do it with a knife because I'll probably cut myself. I watch, well, I watch a lot of different YouTube channels when I when I have time 
But there's one that I've been watching, and I've just been researching and studying. Now, I'm not a vegetarian, but I do love vegetables, and I don't have to have meat all the time. And I've just been watching these ladies cook, and some of y'all may watch them, but it is Jane, and I'm, I'm probably not going to say this right, Jane Estelstein and her mother, Anne. And they are vegan, vegetarians. I don't, I don't know which. I, don't, I, I get mixed up on that. But they don't, they don't do any dairy or any oils or any sugars or anything. But I love to watch and see how they can come up with such dishes, vegetarian dishes that are so healthy for you. And I watch them, and it just really makes me hungry watching them because I am a, a big vegetable and fruit eater. I love them. They make me feel good when I eat them. And um, I'll leave a link to these gals down below if I don't forget because I'd like for some of y'all just kind of watch them too. Like I said, I'm not a vegetarian, but um, I do think sometimes, and, you know, I can incorporate a lot of what they do in my diet, and uh, it'd be good for me. Okay, our rice is done. Like I said, I just done this in the microwave. So I'm going to put it back in there and just let it sit until my chicken's done. And I tasted of it, and it's really good. It's, like I said, it's just a light... A light seasoned rice. You can taste that little bit of lime in it. And uh, the lime zest would have been good too. And you can do it with a little bit of lemon if you don't have lime. So there's our rice. And as soon as our chicken gets done, we're going to make our fiesta bowls. And we can look and see how pretty they are. Then we're going we're gonna to try them and see how good they taste. Our chicken's ready, and I've got everything sitting out here. This is all of our components for our Fiesta bowl. So, let's get it all together, and then y'all can, I'll put you up close where y'all can see what the Fiesta bowl looks like and how I put it. Our chicken, <clears throat> it baked for about 40 minutes, and then I put it under the broiler, and you could take this chicken and put it on the grill, and it'd be even better. Anything on the grill is better. We're going to start with our rice. And this is kind of like the foundation of your fiesta bowl. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these dishes. And I'm going to be using different kind of rices. Rices that are really good for you. I have been buying and uh, a lot more of the black rice, the red red rice, brown rice, different rices. So there is our rice. And I'm just going to take our chicken. And I'm going to put it down one side just like that. My chicken kind of fell apart, so it ain't going to be as pretty. Now, there's so many different things that you can garnish this with, too. Now, as far as your, your bean salad, you don't have to put it in the refrigerator. If you would rather eat this at room temperature, that's fine. So, we got our rice. And I'm going to take some of our bean salad and I'm just going to put it down the middle just like that put a little bit more on his <coughs> and I, I tasted of this and it's really really good And then we're going to take 
just a little bit of our tomatoes. Now there's tomatoes already in the bean salad, but I'm going to put just a few more. And then you got a little bit of mango here. I'm going to put it right on top too, just a little bit. And then we got our avocado. Now you could take sour cream, salsa verde, some chopped up jalapenos, anything that you like, like that. You just make it how you like it. I've been eating avocados ever since I was a baby. Avocados is something that I introduced Mr. Brown to. And I think it was after we even got married. So there is our Fiesta bow. And like I said, you can garnish it with so many different things. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make this supper, this little bit healthier version of a supper. I love making these little these little bowls like this. It don't always have to be a fiesta bowl. You can make it out of just all kinds of good ingredients, and I'm going to be showing y'all how to do that. Off and on, I'll be making some recipes like this. So I hope you try it, because I think you really enjoy it. And you're really going to like that, that corn, that bean salad. It's really delicious. And it's really going to make this dish. Oops. Mm -hmm. I was sitting here thinking, you know, what kind of food critic I am. This has so many different flavors. And each flavor... For the most part, you can taste, and you know how I am about <laughs> how I am about different flavors. I, I really enjoy food that you can get different flavors. You know, I, I like good Mexican food that you can actually taste. Everything don't taste the same. Everything don't taste the same. And this here is really good chicken. It turned out really good. Rice. The chicken's really tender, and uh, yes, the beans. That that corn salad is so good. Mm-hmm. This will be good tomorrow. The rice is is just seasoned just enough, not too much. But this is just really good. It's not real heavy. It's you know I know people think that you know we're Southerners and we do eat a lot of smothered and fried, but. Me and you like stuff like this. We haven't. We don't eat as much fried as we used to. No. I Y'all, I just can't eat a lot of fried foods anymore. It's not good for my, my belly. But I don't mean, get me wrong. I like my fried chicken. And Danny makes the best uh, ribeye you can ever eat whenever we're blessed enough to get one of those. But this is really good. I love all, like you said, I love all, even the mango um, it tastes even better with all this stuff than it did by itself. I'm telling you, it's really, I really like it. So I hope y'all try this. If, uh, if you like stuff like this, and even if you don't, try it, because I think you'll really like it. And you can just put anything on it that you, some people would probably love to put jalapenos and salsa verde and, um, stuff like that. I was going to put a little sour cream on it, but I don't think it needed it. I think it would have covered up a lot of the other good tastes. So y'all come back and see us. It's yummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll see you guys. We love y'all. And uh, we'll be back in a few days. What do you think we'll be doing? There ain't no telling. Yet. <laughs> no, there's no telling. We only got 15 days of school left. 15 well, it's, work days. yeah, we still have to work. We work all summer, y'all. Yeah, but I'm saying 
15 days of school that's when yeah that's when I'm my level can <laughs> come down when I don't have to worry about everybody that's true but we do we work and your level comes down yeah it does we get going at seven I get to come, come home a little bit earlier but we get to go in at seven and come home earlier mm-hmm but there's a lot of, we've got a lot of new people that's, that's come on board, and they may not even know that me and Danny work in the school system. So uh, most of my years has been spent in the kitchen at school, but I've also d drove a school bus. I've done custodial, and I've also been a substitute teacher. So Mr. Brown has been a custodian, but he is transportation director now, and... Mechanic and bus driver. Jack of all trades. He drove a truck for to going get, on. To get a job there, uh, I started custodian. Yeah, you got to get your foot in the door. I drove a bus and took care of the grade school building for one year. That's after I got off the road and driving a truck. Close to 18 years he drove a truck. Y'all, yeah. we could probably sit down and do a whole video of, of our life and the different jobs and things that we've done, couldn't we? We got that much food, I can't eat that long. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to eat and do that. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're going to go and let y'all go. I hope y'all enjoyed this recipe. Y'all try it, you're going to like it. It's, it's a really good summer recipe. So, bye everybody.